English Electric Lightning, British Technology. The English Electric Lightning was an impressive engineering feat for the British people. She was the first and only Mach 2 capable platform ever developed for the island nation and the fastest British fighter of all time. The last aircraft to be designed solely by a British aviation firm. The first aircraft to be designed with direct pilot input and the first Royal Air Force platform to feature an integrated weapons system for automated missile delivery. Subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. William Edward Willoughby Teddy Petter, formerly chief designer at Westland Aircraft, was a keen early proponent of Britain's need to develop a supersonic fighter aircraft. In 1947, Petter approached the Ministry of Supply with his proposal, and in response, specification ER-103 was issued for a single research aircraft, which was to be capable of flight at Mach 1.5 and 50,000 feet. Petter initiated a design proposal with F.W. Freddie Page, leading the design, and Ray Creasy responsible for the aerodynamics. By July 1948, their proposal incorporated the stacked engine configuration and a high-mounted tailplane. As it was designed for Mach 1.5, it had a swept wing to keep the leading edge clear of the Mach cone. This proposal was submitted in November 1948, and in January 1949, the project was designated P-1 by English Electric. On March 29, 1949, the Ministry of Supply granted approval to start the detailed design, develop wind tunnel models, and build a full-size mock-up. On April 1, 1950, English Electric received an official contract for one static and two flying airframes. The English Electric P-1 wing design, combined with two Rolls-Royce Avon engines, configured in a unique stack-staggered arrangement, produced an aircraft with a speed capability of Mach 2. Additionally, it also gave the aircraft an unrivaled rate of climb often described as being a pilot sitting on two rockets. Starting in 1953, the first three prototype aircraft were hand-built at the English Electric Factory at Samsbury, Lancashire. The prototypes were powered by unreheated Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire turbojets, as the selected Rolls-Royce Avon engines had fallen behind schedule due to their own development problems. Defending the V-Bombers In May 1956, the P-1 received the Lightning name, which was said to have been selected partly to reflect the aircraft's supersonic capabilities. The pilots also called it Frightening, referring to the aircraft's challenging crosswind landing characteristics. The Lightning was designed to meet a specific threat, shooting down soviet bloc nuclear bombers penetrating UK airspace, should the Cold War have ever turned into a real conflict. The Lightning was initially designed and developed as an interceptor to defend the V-bomber airfields. During the 1950s and 1960s, the V-bombers comprised the United Kingdom's Strategic Nuclear Strike Force, known officially as the V-Force or Bomber Command Main Force. The three models of strategic bomber, known collectively as the V-Class, were the Vickers Valiant, which first flew in 1951 and entered service in 1955, the Avro Vulcan, which first flew in 1952 and entered service in 1956, and the Handley Page Victor, which first flew in 1952 and entered service in 1957. The V-Bomber Force reached its peak in June 1964 with 50 Valiants, 70 Vulcans, and 39 Victors in service. To fill the immediate need for a supersonic interceptor, Lightning was selected for production. On November 25, 1958, the P-1B, piloted by Roland Beaumont, reached Mach 2, the first time such had been achieved by a British aircraft. This made it the second West European aircraft to reach Mach 2, the first being the French Dassault Mirage 3, just over a month earlier on October 24, 1958. The first operational Lightning, designated Lightning F-1, was designed as an interceptor to defend the V-Force airfields, which along with the dispersal airfields, would be the highest priority targets in the UK for enemy nuclear-armed bombers. In conjunction with those airfields' own last-ditch Bristol Bloodhound missile defenses, the Lightnings would enable the also nuclear-armed V-Force bombers to take off and get clear of their airfields. To best perform this intercept mission, Emphasis was placed on rate of climb, acceleration, and speed, rather than range and combat endurance. 
Originally, a radius of operation of 150 miles from the V-bomber airfields was specified. Variants The Lightning F-1 was equipped with two 30mm Aden cannon in front of the cockpit windscreen and an interchangeable fuselage weapons pack containing two additional Aden cannon, 48 2-inch unguided air-to-air -air rockets, or two de Havilland Firestreak air-to-air -air missiles, a heavy loadout optimized for damaging large aircraft. The Ferranti A-123 onboard radar provided missile guidance and ranging as well as search and track functions. The next two Lightning variants, F-1A and F-2, were steady but relatively minor refinements of the design, but the Lightning F-3 was a major departure. It had higher thrust Rolls-Royce Avon 301R engines, a larger squared off fin, and strengthened inlet cone, allowing a service clearance to Mach 2. The F-3A introduced two improvements a new non-jettisonable 610 imperial gallon ventral fuel tank and a new kinked conically cambered wing leading edge, incorporating a slightly larger leading edge fuel tank, raising the total usable internal fuel by 716 imperial gallons. The conically cambered wing improved maneuverability, especially at higher altitudes, and the ventral tank nearly doubled available fuel. The increased fuel was welcome but the lack of cannon armament was felt to be a deficiency. It was thought that cannons were desirable to fire warning shots in the intercept mission. The Lightning F-6 was the ultimate Lightning version to see British service. Originally, it was nearly identical to the F-3A, except that it could carry two 260 Imperial Gallon ferry tanks on pylons over the wings. These tanks were jettisonable in an emergency and gave the F-6 a substantially improved deployment capability. There remained one glaring shortcoming, the lack of cannon. This was finally rectified in the form of a modified ventral tank with two Aden cannons mounted in the front. The addition of the cannons and their ammunition decreased the tank's fuel capacity from 610 to 535 imperial gallons, but the cannon made the F-6 a real fighter again. Flying for the first time on June 6, 1965, the English Lightning F-6 was the ultimate variant for the Royal Air Force. Flight Capability The combination of two engines and its unique 60-degree swept wing design gave the Lightning a tremendous rate of climb and turn of speed. From brake release on the runway to 40,000 feet altitude, climbing at around Mach 0.87 took only around 2 minutes 30 seconds. The official ceiling of the Lightning was kept secret Low security RAF documents often stated in excess of 60,000 feet. In 1984, during a NATO exercise, Flight Lieutenant Mike Hale intercepted a U 2 at a height previously considered safe for that aircraft, thought to be 66,000 feet. Records show that Hale also climbed to 88,000 feet in his Lightning F 3. This was not sustained flight, but a ballistic climb in which the pilot takes the aircraft to top speed and then puts the aircraft into a climb, exchanging speed for altitude. Lightning pilot and chief examiner Brian Carroll reported taking a Lightning F-53, the so-called export variant, up to 87,300 feet over Saudi Arabia. Carroll compared the Lightning and the F-15C Eagle, having flown both aircraft, stating, Acceleration in both were impressive. You have all seen the Lightning leap away once brakes are released. The Eagle was almost as good and the climb speed was rapidly achieved. Takeoff roll is between 2,000 and 3,000 feet, depending upon military or maximum afterburner powered takeoff. The Lightning was quicker off the ground, reaching a 50 foot height in a horizontal distance of 1,630 feet. The production Lightning F 1 entered service with the AFDS in May 1960, allowing the unit to take part in the air defense exercise Yeoman later that month. Service history the Lightning was the second West European-built combat aircraft with true supersonic capability to enter service, and the second fully supersonic aircraft to be deployed in Western Europe, the first one in both categories being the Swedish Saab 35 Draken on March 8, 1960, four months earlier. On December 21, 1965, Saudi Arabia, keen to improve its air defenses, owing to the Saudi involvement in the North Yemen Civil War, and the resultant air incursions into Saudi airspace by Egyptian forces supporting the Yemeni Republicans placed a series of orders with Britain and the U.S. to build a new integrated air defense system. 
Britain received orders for 34 multi-role single-seat Lightning F-53s that could still retain very high performance and reasonable endurance, and six two-seat T-55 trainers, together with 25 BAC Strikemaster trainers, while the contract also included new radar systems, American Hawk surface-to-air missiles, and training and support services. To provide an urgent counter to air incursions, with Saudi towns near the border being bombed by Egyptian aircraft, an additional interim contract called Magic Carpet was placed in March 1966. The Magic Carpet Lightnings were delivered to Saudi Arabia in July 1966. One was lost in an accident but later replaced. Kuwait ordered 14 Lightnings in December 1966, comprising 12 F-53Ks and two T-55Ks. The first Kuwait aircraft, a T-55K, first flew on May 24, 1968, and deliveries to Kuwait started in December 1968. A Lightning was tasked with shooting down a pilotless Harrier jet over West Germany in 1972. The pilot had abandoned the Harrier, which continued flying toward the East German border. It was shot down to avoid diplomatic incident. During the 1960s, as strategic awareness increased, and a multitude of alternative fighter designs were developed by Warsaw Pact and NATO members, the Lightning's range and firepower shortcomings became increasingly apparent. The transfer of McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs from Royal Navy service enabled these much longer-ranged aircraft to be added to the RAF's interceptor force, alongside those withdrawn from Germany as they were replaced by Sepcat Jaguars in the ground attack role. The Lightning's direct replacement was the Tornado F-3, Lightnings were slowly phased out of service between 1974 and 1988. In their final years, the airframes required considerable maintenance to keep them airworthy due to the sheer number of accumulated flight hours. The Lightning served in 16 variants within the air forces of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, as well as continuing in service with the RAF from 1959 until 1988, and some 337 aircraft were built in its 34-year history. The Anglo-American Lightning Organization, a group based at Stennis Airport, Kiln, Mississippi, is returning a Lightning T-5 to airworthy status. As of March 2021, the aircraft was capable of fast taxiing down a runway. If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. For more interesting military history content, check out our video library.